Okay, so I did it again. Um, I recorded a tutorial and forgot to record my audio, so I'm doing that now. Uh, I also actually did almost complete a sub, a sub D tutorial for the Wingmer, but then Alias crashed and my recording file corrupted, so I'm starting again. Not only did I start again, but I completely forgot to record my voice, so now I'm you know, narrating over it. So what I'm showing you now is that I built some uh, like bone-like curves, some key curves to build from, similar to what you do in NURBS. Um, but you don't really need to build as many because you build off the surface edges usually, like you do when you draft off of a uh, off of a, off of another edge, but in NURBS. So yeah, I'm just showing you now that first, before you get started, you need to create a, a shell for sub D. So that's what I've done. Uh, and then this is where you can find the, the sub D tools. Uh, I decided that I won't add that one yet. I just wanted to add all the, the others. So you scroll down the palette uh, and you'll find a subdivision tab. And I just dragged and dropped all of those subdivision tools into my new subdivision shelf. And then once you've done all of that, make sure you save it because I forgot. I'm not doing very well. Uh, yep, so just keep dragging and dropping those in. And then, yep, once you've done that, you scroll up to the top of the palette where you'll find the a couple of important tools which aren't under there for some reason they're under edit point curve so yeah just drag and drop that under edit point curve all of those all three of them so you can select the edges and the faces of the subdivisional surfaces there's one more which is found there I just drag that whole thing in And there you go. <clears throat> then save preferences. And now you've got that to the end of time. Right, so now what we have to do is build the bone curve. I'm just going to kind of build over what I've already got there because it's quicker. And I've already done this multiple times now. Make sure your blueprints are visible because you're going to need those to build the wing mirror and also get hold of a good quality image online which I've done and I'll show you later um, I hear I'm just hiding the previous version of my sub D at least it meant I had a bit of practice uh, and then yeah deleting some of the curves that I didn't use or didn't need that one I do need but yeah I remember it was a bit higher up because I was able to open a file that I'd worked on but it wasn't the final file I worked on, so I had to get a little bit further than that before it all crashed. But yeah, sub D. So um, I'm not really an expert on sub D. Um, I know how to get by. So if you find a tutorial that's better than mine, then great. But people have been asking me to do one, so this is what I'm going to do and show you how I do it. But I'm sure there's better ways of doing it. I'm just, yeah, not the best right now, but I'm getting there. Uh, so first of all, build the curve for the the bezel around the wing mirror. I think that's a good place to start. You make sure you set your edit point curve to one by one because the the sub D's are just built you're built off one point curves. So you, but you just build them all the way around like this: one, two, three, four, five. And just build it in rear view. So I just realised that I've still got the front view orthographic on. So time to swap that out, hide the front view, make the rear view blueprint visible keep it on the correct layer and then get rid of the, oh no, what we done visible, get rid of the front view, there you go, carry on uh, yep and then just use that as a guide Um, 
place your edit point curve all the way around and you just kind of guess as you go around a corner do a couple more CVs and then when you're on a flatter curve oh and here I just use control hold down control and click the left mouse button to snap like you would do in normal nerves modeling to snap it to the CV then maneuver in plan view and just rotate it round so it matches from plan and when you do rotate it it does end up being a little bit off in rear view so scale that disproportional scale it to make it fit the line drawing so there you go that's the first curve I'm just gonna get rid of that though and just go back to the one I originally used um, and then build another bone line which is this one all the way around just with one by one edit point curves That. Obviously, when you build it in plan view, it, it's not in the correct position, so then you go to side view and <coughs> maneuver it into place just like you were doing for the uh, first two tutorials um, creating a curve network. So, this point is quite similar but different. You still have to have a different mindset. Uh, also, yeah, at the moment it's, it's smiling a bit, so I was just, just trying to make it more positive. Uh, so it hasn't got a big smile on its face uh, yeah then you just carry on doing this all the way around the mirror just pick out the key lines uh, you don't have to do too many and then start surfacing so this curve here I found so here's the image I found, it's on Autocar. Uh, it's got some really good shots, and one of the inside of the wing mirror as well, it's not the best, but it's, it's workable, you can work with that, and I can see what's going on on the inside of the wing mirror there, and there's like a break between black and body colour that flows around, so that's a key curve that you should build in, just as a guide, even if you don't follow it exactly. In the end, it's just good to have in, so you can get your head around what's going on. Okay. Yep, and I was just kind of following that outside because that's the outside of the um, wing mirror. Obviously, you can't get a blueprint of the inside of the wing mirrors, but I was just using that um, feature line as a guide because it will. It looks like it does wrap around on the same plane. So, yeah, you can use even if you don't have the inside of a wing mirror, you can use the outside a lot of the time to help you guide what you're doing. <clears throat> and yeah, and then once you put it inside view, you just maneuver it in plan view again and just get it into the correct position. And there you go. Also, build the curves for the stalk of the wing mirror, and you're good to go. So, I'm sure I'm going to start modeling in a minute. Yep. Let's start modeling. Come on. Yeah, I'm just explaining the stalk curves. Yeah, maybe I should build one there as well, but that will just come with the, with the surfaces. It's not that important. Okay, so we'll start with the ring around the wing mirror. It's a good anchor point, and it's the easiest part, so we can get that in really quick. So you just select the curve, and then you select that tool called extrude, which I just selected in my shelf. I think. Yep. And then you pick global and just pull that arrow that's in X towards the rear and that will extrude just like the, the draft tool does uh, and also make sure you're in the sub D shader setting which is the bottom right shader on the diagnostic shade palette then you select that hull and you center the pivot or oh, that's what I do anyway I select the hull center the pivot and then scale it in and uh, yeah I'm just I'm gonna have a look at the image again just to see what it's doing because I couldn't really tell from the blueprint and there is like a little ledge so like you scale it in and there's a little flat ledge which well, is actually quite round and then it shoots back so I've scaled it into about there which is fine uh, and then we'll build another 
draft or extrusion from there so you select use that tool to select all the whole uh, the whole edge all at once one big hull and then use the extrude tool again this time I'm going to do it in normal and extend it in or extrude it in like that just a little ledge so it hits that inside um, line and then from there do the same again select the ring and extrude and this time I think I'll extrude globally in X just quite far back and that makes your inside border for the wing mirror to sit in uh, and then again center the pivot of those CVs and scale them in and there you go when you hit your um, shiny shader button, I can't remember what it's called, uh, it shows you what it will look like in real time and it looks alright so far looking good um, but one thing I also, for, oh, I was, yeah, so what I also like to do is build the, the actual mirror itself and you can just do this with nerves. you just um, build a plane and uh, maneuver it into position Yep, I was having a bit of a nightmare there. Hit move and move it into position, rotate it, and then push it back. And here I've realised that the, the border, the bevel or whatever you want to call it, isn't thick enough in plan view. It needs to come further rearward in car. So all you do is grab the edges using the edge tool and move them in X back. similar to what I was doing with the draft tool I'm putting the CVs wherever I wanted them uh, and then I maneuver the glass the wing mirror glass into position and select the node that is the thing intersect it with the border and then trim away and delete those curves on surface right next so that's the easy bit done now we move on to the tricky bit which is the actual blob that is the wing mirror so we'll start with that main bone line going through the center of the wing mirror horizontally uh, we'll do the same thing again select edge no sorry you select curve and here I built two separate curves which is annoying but not a massive deal as I'll show you in a minute uh, you select those and then extrude and extrude them up and I want them to be level with that first row on the wing mirror right there because you want them all to be uniform and kind of like doing a similar thing so I snapped that there by using the control button and the right mouse to snap it to to that CV and then I'll just use that as a guide as well as the blueprint all the way around and then you just have to manipulate each individual CV so that they're kind of they're all talking to each other and they're doing a similar thing and nothing's twisting you just have to do that by eye the more, the more things twist, the more the squares do something like that they shouldn't be doing, the worse the highlights will be. But I always find big surfaces like this are difficult to get perfect on sub D, and that's why I don't like it. In nerves, it's so easy to get a nice, clean, shiny surface. Sub D, it's always gonna, there's always going to be a wobble somewhere, and it's uh, very frustrating. And you could just be sat for ages, tweaking, trying to get it to look right. But yeah, there you go. Just kind of follow what I'm doing, try to understand why I'm doing it. And let's have a look what it looks like. So here there's a break because there were two separate curves. I built off two separate curves and now all you have to do is weld it. So you use the weld tool and you highlight between the two surfaces. For some reason that didn't work. And it's because the weld tool is set to unweld. No, nope, it's because it's set to, yeah, it's not set to midpoint. Make sure you click midpoint, highlight the whole thing. And then, yeah, there you go. They, they merge <laughs> together, we'll weld each other together. And then we carry on, you select that, oh, just make sure the CV looks right there, it's a bit too positive. There you go, so you just want it to kind of flow nicely all the way around, in front and side view. Select that edge, as we did before, and extrude, I think normal this time would be better. 
so it kind of does what it's supposed to be doing already but yeah again you have to maneuver everything so you snap that first CV to the border of the uh, wing mirror because it's only snapped and it's not welded it means it won't blend there'll still be a break there which is good and then just continue to manipulate the CVs into the correct position based on the blueprints and just based on your knowledge of what surfaces should be doing and this is why I don't like sub D it's just so boring but people wanted it so now you're getting it just keep yeah tweaking each individual CV like I said I'm not an expert so I'm sure there's someone watching this right now like oh you could have done this it would have been much faster please leave that in the comments because I don't know <laughs> like I'm still learning um, I still believe that nerves are faster I still like people tell me they can model a whole car in sub D in, in a day uh, but I can do that in nerves anyway so it's not a big deal like if you practice enough in nerves you'll get a much better result in the same time but yeah this is all right for now I did say that I was going to be modeling the headlamps and tail lamps in sub D but actually when you've got this the, the headlamp and tail like glass already molded in it's very easy to just get the headlamps in after that because it's just an offset of the glass and then you project the graphics on and trim them trim them away so I won't be doing I won't be doing those in sub D I'll just be doing them in nerves and then on this next bit of the wing mirror you just do the same thing again I'm just trying here I'm trying to figure out what to do next because I want to close it off um, and there's lots of edges on the wing mirror but not so many edges on the border so it's best to add a couple more edges on that border it needs a bit of crown anyway so to do that here I'm still trying to figure it out like should I do a triangle in there I don't know but the de definitely the best thing is to try and get the same number of edges so if, yeah, here I'm still figuring out what I'm gonna do. This is a good option though, bridge, I just use that bridge tool, it's just like the skin tool. You select one edge and select the other, but when you do that it automatically welds it to the border. So you don't wanna do that, you need to unweld it. So you select the unweld tool and just highlight the edge that you wanna detach and it will unweld it or detach it from it and it will no longer blend together. So that's a good start for that point. Now I can use that as a guide. I'm going to move that yeah, into position so it just looks a bit better. <coughs> and now I've got four edges and one edge on the wing mirror border. So it's best now to add a, at least a couple more edges to there. So to do that, you use the um, I'm not doing it yet, I'm still deciding to extrude uh, and then I'll snap that to there snap that to there so yeah I do this first and I realize it's actually best to increase the number of edges just to give it more crown but for now this will do just to close it off sometimes if you're like getting a bit confused it's best to just get some surfaces in there so you can figure out what's going on here I then delete that CV to make it a triangle which is fine like in nerves it's not okay you never build triangles but in sub D just like Maya um, triangles are okay uh, yeah and then I decide that it's a bit flat there <coughs> so yeah here I want to look at the highlights I realize that that needs welding so just weld that together that edge where there was a break check again oh no it's because it's on and weld I always do that, make sure it's on weld, not on weld. <coughs> and there you go, and then I'm like, oh my god, that is a terrible highlight, but that's a D for you. But one of the main reasons is because that area that I've snapped to is very flat. So hopefully, in a minute, I'm going to realise, once I snap that to the edge, that we need some crown in there. And to do that, come on Adrian, hurry up. realized so I've got to add edges 
And to do that, you use this tool that I'm about to click on. No, it's update, insert, import edge or insert edge. And you make sure it's ticked perpendicular, and then you select the edge that's perpendicular to the one you want to create an edge on. And then just hold down, so you select nothing, and hold down the left mouse button and slide it on along to where you want it. And then, yep, select the CVs in that view and push them up. And then re-snap these CVs to those CVs and those ones can just go in the middle. They don't have to hit another CV just because they're going to be separate from the, the ring of the wing mirror anyway. And yeah, other side, this, this can be moved over a little bit as well to get it away from, so it's not pinching too much. When you do that, you have to make sure it's okay in every view. There you go, we've got the first kind of shell, the top shell of there, and there's a horrible lump right there. Uh, but for now, I mean, we'll leave it for now and fix it later. You know, I can do a little bit of tweaking now, but yeah. And the reason, the reason why there's quite a lot of lumps is just because I've done probably one or two too many surfaces there. The, least amount, the less amount of surfaces you do, the better the highlights will be. Same with like when you're modeling in nerves and bring the CV count down, you'll get a much cleaner surface. But yeah, I noticed there's a few little discrepancies here with the, with the points, the edit points. So fixing that will also help the highlights a little bit more. Okay, so we've got the first kind of third of the wing mirror done quite quick but the rest of it is a lot more difficult so you've got to be patient fix any CVs you've accidentally moved because that's the other thing when you select CVs with sub D you can't you can't see the ones highlighted behind the surface so you don't know if you've picked too many or not so a lot of the time you have to double check as you're selecting them that you haven't picked any others otherwise you'll end up having to do this and sorting them out afterwards because it's too too late by then to undo it all. Right, and here I'll just bridge between those two just to close that off. Once that's done, make sure you weld after the, you've maneuvered those edit points into position so they look a bit tidier. Make sure you weld that position, that point there because every time you do a bridge, the edge that's perpendicular to it isn't welded, but the edge that you've bridged to is welded, so make sure you un unweld anything you need to as well, like I, I did there. And there you go, much nicer. Still not perfect, but that's sub D. <laughs> this is why I don't like it. Anyway, we'll keep going. Right, the next part that we should work on is this. So, on the image, it's quite a sharp blend around that point. Let's have a look. So it's quite a sharp point there. So to do that in sub D, you just make sure that the edges that you build are quite close to each other. The closer the, closer the holes are to each other, the sharper the bend, the sharper the radius will be. You can also use a tool called the bevel tool, which will uh, create like bevels for you, which creates the sharper um, radiuses. So here I'm just doing the same again. I'm selecting the edge and then I'm extruding the surface down to match the uh, yeah, border of the wing mirror. And then from there you just kind of do the same again. You just keep keep repeating the process over and over again. As you go along, you just kind of figure out what you have to do. That's looking all right. And then, yeah, here I'm deciding what I want it to be a bit pointier. So you can insert an edge again there. And then, yeah, just kind of manipulate the edit points to, to force it to go sharper on that, on that edge. So maybe it's still a bit too soft, but no, it's looking quite cool. Yeah, no, it's still a bit sharper there, but 
That'll do for now. So go back to yeah, edit, um, sub D shader and just yeah, tweak the CVs a bit just to make them look less twisted, more uniform. same again select that edge and extrude down this time yet yeah, we'll just do it globally down and again snap the NCV to the border CV just as the guide and then maneuver every other edit point into position so they match the border and the blueprint Yep, and just keep tweaking things until you feel like they look right. Looking good. <clears throat> and now we'll move on to this black trim. So you can see there's a little ledge there between the body and the black trim. So we'll do that bit first, select the edge. Extrude, we'll extrude it normal this time. Just a tiny little ledge, doesn't have to be too big. Uh, grab the edge and just maneuver it into position. And then it should blend out as it goes to the border. So snap it to that edge using Control Alt. And then just tweak any other edit points to to get it into a decent position so it looks nice. So at the moment you can see it's a soft blend around there. We don't want it to be a soft transition. We need it to be a tight one or it's a completely sharp one. So you can use the crease tool for that. You select the edge and then select crease. When you shade that up, it will show that it's creased. So there you go. It's just like a positional point. Uh, when you do that though, so yeah, let's, uh, just tweak the CVs a little bit before you move on. carry on so select that edge and extrude oh make sure you saved your work don't forget that so yeah make sure your work saved here I was just getting paranoid about the recorder not working because it stopped working a few times before this so yeah it's still going I just forgot to I forgot to um, set the microphone on so I'm doing it all again I'm watching myself model in sub D which is probably one of the most boring things I've ever seen I don't know how you guys are doing it but 
it's got to be done. Right, okay, so select that, boss, that bottom edge and extrude down. We want to extrude to this point here. And snap it again to the border. And then just arrange the CVs into position. looks a bit weird to me so I feel like it needs to be pulled out pulled forwards a bit looks like it's sinking in that's about it and there you go looking all right this radius here though needs it's a bit soft it needs to be much sharper so here's another tool I like to use you select the edge and use the bevel tool and that will create like a chamfer in this view but in reality it's a it's a nice tight radius Tight like a tiger. Nice. I'm looking alright. I'm annoyed at this point here that it's come away from. So I can't see it because we need to correct the camera. So I'll show you that now quickly. If you find it in the palette, because I haven't saved it in my shelf, it's called the clip tool. It's in camera settings, view settings. There it is, clip. And then you hold down the left mouse button slide it to the right or left, in this case I'll slide it to the left and it, it makes it more visible when you zoom in. But don't do it too much because if you do it too much when you zoom out it goes really blurry and weird. So that's about right now. I can zoom in a decent amount. And again, yep, carry on tweaking the CVs, getting things to look right. I tried, yeah, just to, yeah, I was annoyed that it moved away from this because it's now a sharp point rather than a soft, a soft blend round so it comes away from the bit I snapped it to. So here I decided to get rid of the crease because I thought this might help get rid of the crease and add a bevel in there instead. So you select that edge yeah select that edge and use the bevel tool. Give it a sharper blend. 0.25 or something and I thought that would help but it didn't it still keeps it still pulls it away so then you just have to like tweak the CVs individually but can't bother with that the earlier now we'll try and yet move on to the underside of the wing mirror it's good to have that curve there to like act as a guide because we you can eat work with the front end now, get rid of the rear end view, put the front end in place so you can work out what's going on. And yeah, just make sure the CVs are lined up with the blueprint and yeah, let's carry on modelling. So next step I think is to just do exactly what we've been doing and select the edge and draft down oh here I've accidentally I thought I'd accidentally uh, overlaid my old data but I hadn't so that just confused me slightly right come on let's model yeah I'm still annoyed with that highlight but whatever the rest of it looks okay Yep, yep, I know that bit's annoying, isn't it? Yeah, forget about it. Right, let's go. So here, yeah, I was trying to figure out what's going on as well. Probably best that that, that curve snaps to to each other, to the to the edge. So yeah, snap that back there. Have a look what it looks like. So this outer edge is actually, yeah, it doesn't need to be determined by the curve, it will be determined by the surfaces that wrap around that corner, so that curve can be a bit more rearward of it, so that's fine. 
Um, yep, yep, I know. It is confusing. What are we going to do? We're going to draft off there. Yeah, let's build the stalk first. Or most of it. So we'll draft down. It can be quite a big surface because we've done quite big curves. And yeah, just tweak them into position. And that's generally it. This is all like this is why sub D is quite popular because it is like you don't really. I mean, you have to think, but it's pretty much the same process over and over and over again. And you just tweak edit points into position to get the feeling you want. But that's why I feel it's not as fast as Alias because there are rules with Alias that you have to follow. And once you learn those rules, you become a lot faster. Um, So yeah, you know exactly what needs to be done to achieve certain results. Whereas here, it's like you just kind of make it up as you go along and uh, trial and error, and it's just annoying. But yeah, I suppose there are there are rules as well. It's just a bit more like it's easier to cheat, but cheating isn't a good thing because it means the highlights aren't what you want most of the time. But yeah, I mean, once you have a good knowledge of nerves, then it definitely does help with your knowledge of sub D because you do have to make sure the edit points are uniform and not twisting the surfaces too much, which will then allow you to to create nice surfaces. So here I've just created a surface off the curve so I can use that as just a guide to create a bridge. And then I'll just delete that, so that, that guide surface if you like. And to do that, you can just select the C the NCVs, delete those, and then the surfaces will disappear. Or you can select the faces, it's up to you. But I just like selecting the NCVs because I mean, that's just part of my workflow. And then deleting it. Make sure you save your work. Uh, then I yeah figured it was probably a good idea to build this part of the the stem. Uh, and then I really, yeah, it's not worth having that. Yeah, I realized just get rid of that surface. So I accidentally yeah, just got rid of one CV. What you got to do is pick the face and delete it in that case. There you go. Uh, and then again, select the edge, extrude that down. And just maneuver things into position. In front view as well. That's way off. Nice. Make sure it's recording and carry on. Now it's again just figuring out what you're going to do next and how you're going to just kind of planning ahead what you're going to do because otherwise you can end up in a maze of too many too many edges so yeah I figured it'd be good to just create a ledge off of there to build to so select those two edges separately so you use the tool that I, if you missed that, just rewind and go back to the tool that I selected, it's different to the other edge tool I use because you can it means you can just select it, individual edges uh, unweld those edges and then just maneuver those into position I'm starting to close it off now, it's looking more like a beam 
and just yeah, keep building. Again, manipulate the edit points so the squares aren't twisting too much. And then check what it's doing. And yet, there it's not welded yet, so I could weld it now. Don't know whether I'm going to. No, probably just leave it for a bit and weld it later. Let's get the under part of the wing mirror done. Make sure you save your work. Uh, now I'm just trying to figure out how to tackle it. It's just got to be done pretty much the same as what you did on top. But now we also have a stem of wing mirror to worry about. Probably a good idea to keep checking the um, image you have of the wing mirror 3D image. And I hope you figure it out. So yeah, I feel like the rest of the tutorial is pretty self-explanatory. Um, just follow exactly what I'm doing. Uh, you learn all the key tools now. I've shown you all the key tools that I use. That's literally all I use now for sub D modeling. Just follow along and try to understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And even maybe you can come up with a better way of doing it yourself. But I've uh, stopped caring now because that's my time with sub D done. Uh, and I'm going to go back to NURBS because I hate this. <laughs> Uh, good luck with the rest of it, try not to fall asleep, and uh, we're so close now to finishing off the whole model, so well done.
Okay, now we've got a completed sub D wing mirror. Congratulations. Now let's look at shading it up. So in the control panel, you go onto the visualize tab. Select the material you want, which you can find in the material library, shader library. Double click on the material you want and it'll end up in your palette. And then you just click on the object and select assign and it'll assign that shader to your object. There's multiple ways of doing it. I just find that's the easiest for me. Uh, let me just correct those CVs so it looks a bit more normal. Um, yeah, we'll keep that chrome. And then this lower section that needs to be black. So because it's in sub D and I've modeled it all as one thing, when you select it, it is one object. So you just have to select the surfaces individually. So I'm doing that with the middle mouse button now to add to selection. And be careful not to select the wrong surfaces. So when you do accidentally do that, you can use the left, sorry, the right mouse button to deselect the surfaces you don't want. And just carry on going all, right, all the way around until you've selected the surfaces that you want to change black. And then my plan was to delete those surfaces and paste them so it would create its own node but I missed a couple of small surfaces so yeah you just got to be really careful make sure you select all the surfaces you need um, and then yeah I did have a bit of trouble figuring out like where the black trim ended at the, underneath the wing mirror so I just decided to go with that for now and then we could just trim something in later trim divide something in later um, but yeah, I missed some little surfaces, so when you do cut and paste those that object away, uh, it will mess with the geometry. So look, you'll see now, paste, and then I notice some gaps, and I'm like, what the hell? It's because I didn't select all the surfaces I needed to select. So yeah, it messed with the sub-D geometry, and uh, I wasn't able to fix that, so just make sure... Um, that you don't do don't make the same mistake I did or at least copy and paste that model so you've got a backup and template it I mean it doesn't doesn't matter too much because I can just um, I wanted to get there anyway because there's a change in surface so that was fine but it is annoying because now like, I can't like when you copy and paste it as well you can't then uh, edit it in sub D but anyway that is wing mirror pretty much completed so well done uh, any little details you want to add to that you can you can just do it the same way you do it with nerves uh, by projecting curves onto the surfaces and trimming them away for like the indicator light and things like that.